Welcome back to Kingdom of a Charity Easter Edition 2015, Day 2. Uh, I'm your host, Calum Leslie, here with you again. With me to cast is TJ Izumakuti Sanders, and we have another great game coming up for you. But let's just look back quickly at the game that we just saw. Uh, Muzzy versus Gara. Gara winning 3-1. to one. A strong performance from Gara, and uh, really, I think, setting his stall out as one of the, the players to watch in this tournament for the rest of the time. Yeah, he was on the ropes a couple of the games. Um, he was on, like, one a draw to lose or a draw to win. They were very close series, especially the first couple. Um, especially that first one where he got really solid juggles uh, against the mech mage to to close out the game because all M Muzzy needed was like something to survive on the board he did one damage to survive on the board and just just couldn't get it but uh, well played uh, Garo of course we'll be seeing him later in the day when we broadcast the quarterfinals and Tice versus show now these guys are uh, they come from like two different places uh, Tice was once upon a time known as the the king of online tournaments uh, he played in every open tournament. Uh, people uh, knew his name before they ever saw his face, just because of you see his his name on like uh, Hearthstone top deck because he'd always be at the top of tournaments. So people net deck Tice before they even knew who he was. Uh, that's how that's how crazy it was. Eventually he went to offline tournaments, but it was a while before he had much success in offline tournaments. I'm not sure if it was nerves or, or whatever, but he never really met the same amount of success in offline tournaments than he did in online. Um, but this is his home. This is an online tournament. He's from the comfort of his own home or wherever he chooses to be. Who knows? Yeah. Um, I mean, he was one of the original uh, kind of king of the open tournament, wasn't he? I mean, yeah, we've exactly, seen guys yeah. come through like Sixo, Faramir, and that guys like Orange and Indurin. Luffy. Are, yeah, kings of the of the open to, of the open qualifiers in the online tournaments. I mean, I think Ty says what five or six Zotac cups to his name, which Zotac cups are notoriously hard to win. Obviously, single elimination. Uh, I won an obscene amount of weeks on the uh, I Heart You King of the Hill as well. Uh, going back to that point, was a yeah a formidable online player, but now is a player who is winning a lot offline as well. Won the uh, DreamHack Masters Bucharest at the end of last year, which was his first major title. Uh, won the OTK Invitational Skirmish last month as well. Uh, is on Team to Heal him now with with uh, Life Coach and RDU. Um, I know he's very close with RDU, and those guys are. Uh, kind of in the form of the life in a little way and in some ways at the moment just practicing really hard together and in a really good team environment it seems like a really good team where they all get on they all seem to be working well together really nice um, wardrobe as well yeah i mean the the wardrobe lothar in particular uh i mean lothar does have to have a nice wardrobe at all times to a lot fair. of good looking players on that team indeed well both of these players are in the kingwin pro league as well tyson show uh, Show is currently second in the alliance group behind Strife Crow. Uh, Tice is currently in seventh place on a three to three record, but it's uh, very very close between basically second and eighth in that group. Uh, and he just needs to play. He's missing a game at this point. hasn't played is a, a game behind, so uh, could all change in the in the KPL. But Tice has been uh, a little bit less form in there, but is definitely a player to watch in this tournament. I think possibly uh, if you're looking at things like the Gosu Gamers rankings, is probably. Uh, quite possibly the highest ranked player in this tournament. Yeah, it's uh, it's definitely possible because um, he's been playing it a lot lately, so he's had a lot of points available for him to to take and move up those uh, the go to gamers ranks. Um, but we talked about the possibility of an all tempo store final earlier, but there also is a possibility of an all complexity final as well, because Dog was a player that's on the top side of the bracket that moved on from yesterday. Uh, so if Show wins here, then um, uh, that's it's increasingly likely with only eight players in a single elimination format um, that we might see a, a team kill final, uh, at least for, for one of those two. But Yes, yeah, good that we kept the teams apart because we can have those big showdowns in the final. Not even sure if it was intentional, but if it was, good on you, bracket creator. I'm sure they have a guy specifically for that, the guy whose job is making the bracket. Just he makes the bracket. They pay him. Oh. They pay him will be the equivalent a thousand packs, packs a year 1200 yeah, packs a year just to create brackets well uh we do have the lineups of these players tice is uh kind of following your roles a little bit here uh with the mage warlock and rogue picking three of go. the classes that you've picked are the strongest to watch out for and uh show also bringing warlock but bringing druid and warrior mm -hmm. um i said it before i'll say it again uh mage warlock rogue druid i think the four classes the four go-to classes right now Honorable mention for Hunter, but I think Hunter's a lot less consistent than the others. Uh, a lot of players feel yep. more comfortable with Hunter, uh, just because... It, it, I'm not saying 
by any means that it's an easy deck to play, but it's easier. It's more straightforward. Your goals and your win conditions are easier to understand and more laid out for you. Um, there's always those jokes where those players will, will tape a piece of paper to their screen so that the only thing that shows is their board in their opponent's face. Exactly. But there is a little bit more thought that goes involved into Hunter. As we saw earlier, Wagar made some pretty fantastic plays to come back from what looked like a near impossible situation to win in the Mech Mage. There are some really tough decisions that you need to make as Face Hunter. Um, but we won't see any Hunters in this series. Uh, first time today that we won't see any Hunters. And uh, these are the kind of matchups that I really like to see. Uh, yeah, absolutely. No Hunters in this matchup. Show bringing his Warrior. Show is very much known as a Warrior player. Um, and I talked yesterday in kind of explaining the technicalities of Conquest uh, of an example from the KPL with the Firebat Show matchup where Show, because he's known as a warrior player, Firebat brought three anti-warrior decks which were able to target that deck and made, meant Firebat could get a 3-2 win coming back from 2-0 down. So be interesting to see if Tice has maybe thought about any kind of strategy as well. It's obviously different. Uh, the KPL, you can prepare your decks for one specific player, whereas in this tournament, you have to win uh, four games in order to win the tournament with your same lineup. So you can't really target individual players as much, but this warrior... We'll have to wait and see how Show does with it. Uh, he's not going to open with it. I did think he might go with that, but it's going to be Warlock for Tice versus Druid for Show in game number one, which we're going to get going for you very quickly here. Yeah. Should be starting pretty soon. Show is also one of the players that is on the top of my list, uh, along with Ecop and Dog for players that could most likely play a supervillain in a movie. <laughs> um, I think it's the facial hair. It's the mustache. It's, yeah, it's definitely the mustache. Um, uh, but it's going to be uh, Tice on the Warlock first game, and Sho is going to be on the Druid the first game. So Warlock for Druid. I'm really curious to see what type of Warlock this is going to be. The majority of players, and I actually think most of the players that we've seen so far, have played some variation of Zoo. Uh, early in the day yesterday, we saw players play the more demon-oriented Zoo uh, with uh, a little That's bit heavier hitting cards. Yeah, there was somebody yesterday played uh, Bane of Doom with Malganus and Doctor Boom, which is sort of a, a zoo demon hybrid deck, and we actually only got to see about 15 cards in that deck, so we didn't really get to see the bottom half or where exactly it topped out at, um, or how was, uh, fast the curve actually was for the zoo. But it's pretty it much was been jab, all zoo. wasn't it? That was Jab that played that. Yeah, yeah, mm. yeah. Because he because he got the Malganus against Number Guy. Yeah, there you go. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it was it was it was Jab. Yeah, so he's he's the one playing the the, the Bane of Doom, a little bit slower, a little bit slower. All right. Well, we're gonna get into this game now. Uh, these guys are just getting ready, we're just waiting to be able to press the spectate button. These guys are matches getting underway right now. It's gonna be game number one of Tice versus Show, Warlock versus Druid. Like you say, I think we're looking at probably a Zoo from Tice, though. He could bring something different and show with the druid i don't think we'll see any other mill druid today i think it's probably likely to just be a double combo druid yeah so uh yeah we're moving into the gameplay just now i actually didn't recognize tice without his hair all did up because <laughs> he usually like spikes it up right yeah yeah or at least like yeah does, a little, does something with a little it different look yeah this is going to be this year. also uh, i want to make a quick correction for something that i said earlier uh that my good pal monk decided to uh correct me on um ecop actually helped artosis prepare for that BlizzCon World Championship final and not Crip because everybody knows Crip does not need any help preparing because Crip is the Hearthstone God. And Ecop and Artosis were both on the same team at that point. Yeah, yeah, that's true. Yeah, yeah, that's true. That's true. So just a, a quick correction there. I just got it mixed up. And uh, of course, everybody knows that Artosis needed all the help he could get because he was the, the Hearthstone pleb who tried to execute his, his own Sylvanas. And I hope he's not watching. <laughs> I doubt he's watching. He's too, he's too important to be watching us. He's probably over streaming on a Zubu. Yeah, exactly. Uh, we can see it is pretty much Zoo from Tice here, though, again, that Void Collar. Uh, this could well be the deck that we've seen from Gara and uh, from Tides. Yeah? Not Tides. I'm thinking, I'm, well, yeah. I'm confused. Who else played that deck? I'm confused too, man. Who the else played which deck? With the Sea Giant and the Void Collar. Uh, sea Giant's a pretty standard card in Zoo. It's, <laughs> I don't think you can identify a certain deck as having Sea Giant. Some players play one, some players play two, some players play zero. Oh, some, hello. Some players think about playing Sea Giant and then don't, which kind of is like playing half a Sea Giant. <laughs> some, and they play Morganus instead. Yeah, Morganus. Yeah, this is this seems like the the, the hybrid. The well, with the Turn 4 Void Collar and the Morganus in hand, 
really fantastic stuff. This could get interesting really yeah. quickly. Yeah. Uh, Druids, uh, in the mirror matchup, the Malganus can be devastating. Because if the Malganus comes out, a lot of times the, the player doesn't have many things to deal with it. Um, but in this situation, it's... There's a chance for a BGH, where like Swipe Wrath is a, is a way to deal with Malganus. But if you use resources to kill the Voidcaller on a turn, on an early turn, most likely you won't have the resources to kill whatever comes out of it as well. It's really risky stuff. This is kind of a, in some ways, a garbage hand for show. It's really tough. <laughs> Double Savage Double War. Double Savage War. And with this the Wild Growth as well. In this next turn, Power of is going to come down on an egg, take out the Shade, and spawn a 4-4. Uh, and he'll, he'll be able to develop another threat as well. I mean, actually, he, he could just even play the Void Caller. It'll be out of range of the... Uh, I don't think he can really pass up an opportunity to... Yeah take out the shit i think he he definitely will be tempted by the void collar but i think you're right i think we need to see the power one content creeper seeing the dr boom as well this is uh very much reminiscent of the deck we saw from jab yesterday in the first game mm -hmm. so this could be a very similar list we know that a lot of all huge amount of pros train together that even you might not know about and pros share decks about and things see each other's streams you know what they always say i think Pros that train together stay together. Yeah, absolutely. I think uh, six of us taking credit for someone's lineup that we saw that we saw yesterday. <laughs> I think most players can take credit for a lot of other players' lineups. There's a lot of <laughs> there's a lot of collaboration going on, and not even intentional collaboration. The fact that Hearthstone is like an online game, it's unlike other card games because everything is is so accessible. And everybody His dog makes taking credit so possible. Okay. And so <laughs> sometimes people will take another person's deck without even realizing, or take another person's deck from the interwebs. Yeah. So the silence probably going to come down the void call here. That thing is scary. Yeah, I mean, you know, you just know that if Malganus comes down, you're in just a really tough position. So he's got to silence it. There comes the silence. He's gonna wrath and coin hero power on the four four to clear it off, and uh, that's not a bad position for show actually. Now I mean, double savage or in hand means he's gonna be top decking, so he needs to top deck an ancient of lore pretty quickly. Yeah, and I mean all Tice has to do right now is drawing to something decent, drawing to something that he can put on the board. And Knife Juggler is something that he can put on the board because next turn he's going to have Dr. Boom. Uh, a couple turns later, he's going to have Imp, Imp Gang or Malganus. And if he summons a couple Imps from Imp Gang Boss and it lives, and those Imps live, like if there's no swipe that comes out, he's going to be in a really good spot. Oh, the snipe doesn't get it. Oh, no. Oh, the oh, here's the swipe off the oh, top. No. Top decked and wrecked. Top decked? This guy's deck is crazy. Insert your own memes here. Yeah. Yeah. Gonna be a swipe. Make sure you type in exclamation mark packs in the chat. Make sure you spam it for your chance. Um, packs. I'm pre I'm not sure if the imp game boss works correctly at this point. Cause I'm not sure if that's if the second imp should get hit. I don't know. Uh, there's a, been a lot of speculation. Some people say it's a bug. Some people say that's how it's. I just think that there are some interactions which are different. Uh, most of the, a lot of the times it's inconsequential. Uh, in this case, it'd be a pretty big deal because one of them surviving. Actually, no, because he'd just be able to clean up with his hero power. So it really doesn't mean that much. Pilot Shredder's a pretty good drop. It's pretty sticky, but he's facing up against a Doctor Boom. Um, and <laughs> I mean, Savage Roar seems like a pretty reasonable play here. Uh, how much damage does he actually have? So he's got 6 plus 12 from Savage Warrior. He's actually got 19 damage. So he's only 3 off lethal, which is pretty crazy. Yeah. Force Nature exciting. actually off the top there would have been lethal. Because he is on turn 9 because of uh, he did have that wild growth start. So. But this is a, kind of a bad position because he actually... It looks like he's thinking about... Okay, he's going gonna to go for the single Savage Roar and the Pilot Shredder just to put some damage in while he can. I kind of like this because he knows this board is going to get cleared by the bombs. He just wants to do as much damage as possible at this point and put his opponent low to the point where 
no matter what he can do, if he draws Force of Nature, he's going to win. Well, there's there's a lot of draws that he can actually have to win the game. Um, yeah, Druid to the Claw, I think. As yeah, well. Druid of the Claw as well. Uh, yeah, yeah, Druid to the Claw with Hero Power would be lethal. Yeah. This, this is kind of awesome, sucks. Man. Yeah, because he's it's it's he can't play more than two things, so he's gonna want to tap. No, I don't know. I don't think he wants to tap here. I think he has everything that he needs to win the game. To be honest. Malganus Doomguard is just about everything. You can actually clear the board here, um, which puts his opponent on just a couple draws for lethal. Next turn, Malganus is going to come out, buff all those imps. Um, he wants his 7 damage to go to face, so he wants his bomb to hit the mech warper and take it out. That's a bit unfortunate. Oh, yeah, you have to tank the damage on the, the Dr. Boom there. Azure Drake. Oh. <sighs> getting close, getting scary. There's the Keeper of the Grove, and I'm not sure. That's not a great draw. No. If you're going to Keeper of the Grove anything, um, actually, no. I, Keeper of the Grove face is a little bit weird. Uh, I guess it puts him on a swipe draw to win. Uh, second swipe would be another out for him to win, because he could swipe Savage Roar uh, Hero Power. Um, but is that's actually lethal, exactly lethal. <laughs> yeah, that's exact lethal with the Malganus. That's yeah. crazy. Yeah. Imps suck up to 33. It's like a quartermaster for those imps. Yeah, it's it's really hard to expect Malganus to come out like that because one, you don't know if he's running Malganus. Um that keeper of the grove on the face gives him one more out. It gives him swipe as another win condition. Uh so like next turn he he could have drawn a force of nature, he could have drawn a druid of the claw, or he could have drawn a swipe, all which would have won. Uh it's really some people will say, oh, well, if he knows Malganus is a possibility, he needs to count up the damage and keep her the Grove one of the imps. But that's something that you just can't really expect. Yeah. And so Tice with an explosive win in game one. Yeah, I just say if, if he'd keep her the Grove one of those imps, he wouldn't have had exact lethal, but he probably was done anyway with the Malganus. He didn't really have any way to deal with the Malganus. He just drew really poorly and then had to use all his cards, was left with that double Savage Roar in hand and was always in a really difficult position with, with that double Savage Roar being his only two cards. Um, yeah, Shul did not expect the the Malganus there. Well, Shul does have his all, all his decks left. He's going to move on to his favored warrior and Tynus is going to go for either the Mage or the Rogue, um, either of which can be pretty bad matchups, particularly if this is a Phrase Mage, obviously. These are both really bad matchups for against Warrior. If it's a mech mage, it can be a good matchup. Um, we'll have to wait and see what Tice is going to go with. Yeah, uh, Tice. Normally, players want to save that their most consistent and strongest decks for last, uh, just so they can be able to if they they have multiple opportunities to to clean up. Um, it looks like Tice is going to go with uh, Rogue, and Cho's actually going to switch it up to the Warrior. So switching up to the Warrior is actually a good choice because uh, Warrior has a good matchup against either of the decks that, that Tice would pick in that situation. Um, Freeze Mage is probably is the most popular variation of Mage right now in competitive play. And Warrior does really well against Freeze Mage and Rogue is the other class and uh, Warrior does really well against Oil Rogue as well. Or Ro Warrior does really well against Oil Rogue as well. So um, really great choice to switch to Warrior. Yeah, I think Shul is in a pretty good position with Warrior here, especially if this mage is Freeze Mage. Uh, if it's Mech Mage from Tice, which I have seen him play before, it uh, it could be a better matchup for him. And the yeah, it could uh, if it's Mech Mage, then Tice possibly has a, a pretty good chance to win the series here. But actually, if it's Freeze Mage, I kind of favor Shul at this point. We we can be honest here though. Every I'm pretty sure we've seen everybody play Mech Mage at some point or another in the last couple months. This is true. Um, in the March season, Mech Mage was, I think, one of the, probably the strongest deck in both ladder and competitive. Uh, there was a lot of cards that came in, like Emperor Thorsen, that made a lot of other decks stronger, that flipped the meta a little bit to where there's a lot of decks right now that Mech Mage has trouble with. Um, but uh, we'll, we'll have to see what Tice is bringing, because we, we, we aren't going to see that Mage this game. It is going to be uh, Tice's Rogue versus Show's Warrior. Yep, and it's going to be a pretty standard oil roll by the looks of it. With is the variant with the Edwin in? That's kind of a Edwin not always included in oil rogue, but yeah, it's going with it here. Uh, early fiery war axe 
is pretty important in pretty much every matchup for Warrior. Less so in this matchup than things like uh, Meg Mage, but always good to have. And a cruel Taskmaster as well. Yeah. Armor Smith as well. So show drawing into everything you need to really in this early game. This. Show plays Control Warrior. That. Um, did we see control cards in the mulligans? I didn't see. I didn't get to see the mulligans. Because a genius move by Show. Well, I guess Armor Smith is control card. A genius move by Show would be to actually play something different than Control Warrior. Would be for yeah. for Show. Everybody's like, oh yeah, Show is the. He's the the warrior guy. He every time he gets high legend, every time he gets like simultaneous top ten legend on NA and EU, he's always playing warrior, and he's always at the forefront of warrior meta techs and innovation. His his is the control warrior the iNet deck. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Or, or Fibonacci. Fibonacci is yeah. my go-to control warrior guy. Um, but Sho is 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 usually more accessible one because he streams um, quite a bit more. But the genius move by Sho would be to just come into a tournament one time playing something different. Like playing a combo warrior or playing Grim Patron warrior. It'll never happen. Grim Patron warrior, that's what you need. All right, so we see the Cruel Taskmaster coming in to make this a 3-3 Armor Smith. Backstab's a decent pickup. Can uh, can Phantomize Backstab if he wants, but that would, correct, that would give Shaw a lot of armor, obviously. I think he may just trade the Edwin into this Armor Smith and then Backstab the 2-2 the two -two and create a dagger. Going to be able to clear the board. Clearing out that Armor Smith's pretty important. Getting this early Edwin for Tice is pretty good as well. Yeah. Just a coin Edwin on turn two, a 4-4. Four, four. It's uh, basically Millhouse Mana Storm without the drawback. A lot of rogues have been uh, cutting Edwin from their from their decks, from their World of Rogue lists. Um, it's a little bit inconsistent sometimes. There's a lot of times where you wish it was something else when it's in your hand. Um, but the, I like this more uh, creature-heavy uh, rogue. Uh, I'm curious to see where, he, what the top end of his his curve looks like, like if he's running uh, Doctor Boom in the stack or if he's running Emperor Thorson. I think the the creature heavy Oro, Rogue, which is similar to what Orange ran, went at his run through the Seed Story Cup, uh, is really strong right now because a lot of the classes that Oro Rogue would naturally struggle with that are popular right now, like Warrior, the creature heavy version of the deck actually increases the the likelihood that you win those matchups because bringing out a big board like Bala teacher two Bala teacher two powder cheddar emperor thorson stuff like that is actually makes it really tough for warriors to be able to deal with it usually with the warriors win condition in that situation is to make the rogue sort of run out of damage either pressure the rogue or just have so much health gain with your armor ups that the rogue just doesn't have enough damage to be able to kill you and having the creatures on the board as opposed to more spell heavy makes it so that you're more likely to be able to close out the game against a heavy control warrior. What do you think about the uh, the early Harrison there? Harrison Jones often in this matchup, you want to keep it for when your opponents put something like a deadly poison on and just take that power away. Uh, but he opted to do it just on the one attack dagger. A lot of the times you'll, you'll never be able... To... Rogue will make it really hard for you to catch a deadly poison or an or a oil dagger. A lot of times what they'll do is they'll use the Blade Flurry on the same turn um, when they use a, a big weapon buff like that. So you're not guaranteed a, a weapon buff with the Harrison. You can't really afford to keep a clunky card like that in your hand in hopes of getting a better draw. Like putting a 5-4 body on the board, destroying the weapon that he has, which kills his momentum even if there's no buff on it, and drawing a card, you have to use it as soon as you can because it's strong regardless of what, of what you get out of it. Absolutely. Uh, going for the preparation here into the Fan of Knives, which is pretty good for the hero power, with the, the spell power, rather. Mm -hmm. And then can kill the Thorison with the SI7 and the hero power. Yeah. I actually would have liked to see um, just Dagger uh, Tinker and then, and then attack into it, because you'd have the 4 damage Tinker, which would match up nicely. And you'd buff your Azure Drake to be able to do the uh, the seven damage there. 
But, and you know there's no Harrison Jones. And you know there's no Harrison Jones, yeah. So you can be pretty safe to do that. Um, but, of course, this pl that play it does work out well. It puts more bodies on the board, which uh, having your, your power spread out across the board against a warrior is one of their weaknesses because they have great single target removal. But Brawl is just about their only AoE removal. All right. Do you, uh, you think he might sap here? It's really his only option. I, uh... Yeah, but... <laughs> I mean, what, what else do you do other than let 10 damage come into your face? He can take 10 damage. I don't know. I'm not convinced. Because he's taking 10 damage from what otherwise would be the damage that would kill him. And he still has to worry about the Grom eventually when he saps it, but I guess this is the biggest tempo play that he can make. Yeah, I just, I, as a rogue, I'm a really greedy rogue player. Like, I'll try and wait to the last possible minute to, to sap, and I'll take a lot of damage um, and play a really risky style in order to um, try and gain a little bit of, of an advantage on the board, to try and gain a little bit of leverage. Now I bet he wishes he still had that sap. But if, <laughs> if he didn't sap last turn, then the, the Gromish would basically kill him. Yeah, that's Because he'd that's be able rough. to hide behind two sludge punchers. So it's obviously, sapping that is obviously the only play that he can make, but... You always have to think about what else you could possibly do. You can't just yeah. automatically do it without thinking. Double Shredder to build a board here for Tice. Shield Slam does have the shield block as well. Execute for the low theb. Lots of answers for showing the warrior here. And this is this is really kind of, for me, sums up control warriors. Just answers for days. I love the placement of the eggs and their the webcams. It looks <laughs> like shows just like He's really hungry. He's a he's a poor peasant looking through a glass window at the last two eggs, and he wants to eat them. He's waiting for the shop owner to get off work to give him the the eggs. <laughs> As our producer says, like a snake in the grass. Look at him. He's slithering towards those eggs. Snakes actually eat eggs. You're obsessed with these. Did you did you not get any Easter eggs this year or something, TJ? Because you you're obsessed with these Easter eggs. I mean, I ate copious amounts of chocolate. <laughs> Well, lots of damage being taken in the face for the rogue here, but that blade flurry is going to be able to take care of everything. And put the warrior down to 13 as well, but shield maiden in hand actually feels like at this point could be the MVP of this matchup because it's going to be able to take the warrior uh, out of range a little bit. Oh, there's a Dr. Boom though. Yeah, he needs to shield block shield slam this. <laughs> if you play Dr. Boom, you're dead. Yeah, he needs to shield maiden shield Boom. slam. Yeah. I'm just saying that our threat's coming into hand for sure as well to build up over the next couple of turns. Uh, he needs to shield slam the 7-3. And Ancient Watcher, <laughs> it's definitely a dud pretty much, unless there's an owl in this deck. Uh, which is highly doubtful. Uh, there's not a lot of room for, for owl plebs. Yeah, there's not a, not a lot of room for it. You see the occasional spell breaker as well, but... <laughs> It's not that uncommon. It's been a anymore. long time since I've seen a spellbreaker. The last time I saw a spellbreaker, uh, Control Warrior sometimes will take in a spellbreaker. It's it's the it, to me it's the only deck that plays spellbreaker. Is occasionally one spellbreaker in Control Warrior. The old uh, Watcher Druid. Yeah. Watcher Druid. Wow. Mm. That's a throwback. Um, he's thinking about whether or not to armor up or to play an acolyte here. He's just gonna go for the armor. I think that's a good idea. Need to sprint. Sprint off the top. That's oh sprint. no, that's not a sprint. That's. I mean, that's that's game, right? That's because he's got the Gromash charge. Yeah. So Tice is gonna go ahead and concede. Show is gonna win one game with his signature warrior. And uh, yeah, so that's that's actually if this is Freeze Mage, that's pretty good for Tice. Because Freeze Mage versus Warrior is the the worst matchup, and if he's been able to dodge the Freeze Mage Warrior match, it's actually pretty good. I don't think he's too bummed about getting the warrior win out of the way. <laughs> he's still going to have to win with that rogue, though. And uh, Sho has uh, Druid and Warlock left. So, yeah, he yeah. can take. A uh, rogue does decently well against both, uh, unless it's a handlock, traditional handlock, which we haven't seen any thus far in the Penguin for Charity event. It's all been Zoo. I'm going to have to do something about this sun. I'll figure it out. I'll figure it out before the next game, but it's going to creep across my face and blind me slowly across the course of the afternoon. 
I'll need to do something about it. Not a problem for you, of course. So early in the morning still. <laughs> there is a fish. Sunlight confirmed. Sunlight. I don't even go outside. I don't know what sunlight is. Nope. It started off dark where TJ is, and it's going to finish being dark where I am when we finish the end of this day. <laughs> yeah. But uh, Tice is going to continue with his rogue for game number three. And uh, Shaw may well go back to his druid, or he may go on to his warlock. We'll see. He's, he, took a little, he stood up for a minute there, so we haven't quite... Uh, he stepped away just to get, some, get, get a drink, clear his head, get himself in the right frame of mind. Yeah, after warrior games, usually I have to get up and take a little bit of a walk as well. Those can be those can be some some doozies. Sometimes you do get yourself into uh, some real slugfests. It can take a while. Yeah, Rogue is what, usually one of the quicker matchups because a lot of times Rogues just run out of damage or run out of cards or both. Um, but uh, later on, we'll probably might be able to see Chucky is one of the players bringing priests. So later on today, we might be seeing some priest versus warrior depending on what matchup he's uh, going to be going into. Um, Joe's still deciding on which deck to pick. Uh, Tice, of course, next match ha has locked in the Rogue, so he's going to be playing the Rogue again. So we'll see what Joe's going to play. Uh, of course, we mentioned he's got Warlock and Druid left. Um, Druid can beat Rogue if they can get a lot of pressure early. Uh, it's a pretty even matchup, I'd say. I might give the Rogue a slight advantage. But a lot of it depends on how how good the early game is for the Druid. If they can get a good ramp start, um, not not necessarily an integrate play early on, because that's vulnerable to sap. But like wild growth, get their shades rolling early, uh, maybe get like an early pile to treader. Those those things are are what is going to win games against against a rogue if you're a Druid player. Um, and Warlock can't really talk about it because we just don't know what kind of Warlock it is yet. Who knows? I mean, I say the. Uh... The odds would suggest that it's likely to be a zoo form. It's going to be the Druid that we're going to see. So we're going to have to wait and see uh, what this Warlock looks like. So Rogue versus Druid. Um, it's a pretty common matchup nowadays, obviously, with Oil Rogue being popular. Druid becoming popular again is one of the strongest decks. Um, yeah, as you say, it can be pretty much a toss-up. It all depends how they draw and how they start. Yeah. If, if the Rogue just draws their cards in the wrong order, it can be a really tough time. Yeah. Of course, our uh, mods just added a new uh, command as well. If you type in exclamation point angry unicorn, there's a chance that you might actually see an angry unicorn on screen. There's a, they've told me that this is just the perfect thing for, the perfect command for us to be able to do. You have to spam it though, or else it won't show up. I think you're, I think you're messing with Twitch chat, DJ, and. Uh... In Soviet nope. Russia, you don't mess with Twitch chat. Definitely Twitch not. Chat mess with you. Definitely not trolling the production crew as well. Putting them on the spot for not delivering an angry unicorn when the masses will demand for it. Well, we do see the uh, hands getting ready. We're going to get into this game here, just getting the perspective set up so we can get into this. But it's going to be the Druid of Show versus the Rogue of Tice with the series at. Uh, Two one at one 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 to one. This is game number three. Slight mind blank there. <laughs> Series at one one for game three. All to play for. So uh yeah, let's go ahead and get into the gameplay for this as soon as we can. We can see pretty good start for the druids, it looks like. Yep, so we've got the game on now. We can see the uh innervate shade. MC Tech again, pretty much a dead draw unless you get some huge violet teacher turn. Yeah, it's not quite as dead as dead of a draw as it is if you're playing against the Freeze Mage, as we saw in the, uh, one of our earlier series. Uh, but still, again, like you said, Violet Teacher is about the only time that you'll ever be able to get value out of that against uh, against Rogue. So yeah, this is the Wild Girl start. Wild Girl start, pretty fantastic. Because um, you want to get those shades rolling really early against a Rogue player, so it doesn't get caught in a, in a stray Blade Flurry or something of that sort. Um, and actually, Shade is a big liability here, unless he's planning also to innervate out of hero power. Uh, because if he shades here, a spell-powered fan and I just completely takes it out. Um, yeah. And I don't like the early innervate plays for Druids. You want to use that innervate to sort of uh, leverage a little bit later on to help you clear. Because if he innervates Druid of the Claw here and then it gets sapped, he's, he's losing a lot of momentum. So yeah. I like this play the best. 
yeah, whenever it plays against Rogue can be really weak for like that exact reason, just sap and those huge spell power turns as well. You can really, really easily lose your momentum. And yeah, so we're going to see the Phantom Knives come out here to deal with this mind control tech. And Shul's feeling pretty good about that because it means he can be a little bit more assured when playing his shade. Yeah, he's just going to drop the shade down here. Ooh, Rag. Rag is a really great card against Rogue. It's hard for them to remove. Um, it, you know that it's going to do consistent damage and put on consistent pressure. It makes it so that, like, even if you sap it, it's not really a viable sap target because it, are, it you're effectively not doing anything except wasting your opponent's mana, but they're still getting the effect out of the out of Ragnarok, so I like that card. Yeah, absolutely. It's I think the it's Nihilum really... Druid. <laughs> I'm a big fan of Rag. It's, uh, He's using his own... He's using his opponent's team's deck against him. If we see a nurse, then I'm calling shenanigans. <laughs> well, Ancient of Lore coming to hand. The Innervate Ancient of Lore feels pretty tempting, though. He also possibly wants to do something about this Violet Teacher. Can silence it, could damage it and run the shade in. I guess it depends how much you value keeping the shade alive. Because he can trade it here. I think, yeah, that's what he's going to go and do. Rather than leave the 3-5 body. That's a bold move. He floats a mana there. Um, he uses... Quite a bit of resources to actually just take out that body teacher. Mo probably afraid of it because he doesn't have swipe in his hand. Well, we could see a turn 6 Ragnaros here. Innervated Rag. Again, you've got to be afraid of swipe, but... It's pretty tempting to drop Rag on turn six. Afraid of sap? Yeah, you're afraid, afraid of the sap. Yeah. There it is. And it's so tough to remove because you have to use so many resources. <laughs> Ty's respecting the Rag play so much. Oh, very good. Yes. <laughs> it's really respected the oh, Rag there. I like that. The Gelbin Stalker. One of the. Should... Actually, one of the best cards that you can get in Oil Rogue because you're guaranteed an oil target. Yeah, that's really good. All right, he actually has a way to. He actually has multiple ways to clear this here. He can dagger up, prep oil, and then um, he doesn't even have to take any face damage from it. He can actually attack in with the Gelbin and then eviscerate it. Um, yep. Or he could just, uh... yeah, that seems to be the most efficient. Yeah, I like I like that. I think that's the best way to deal with it. Using the eviscerate, though, there is merit to to using the SI seven, maybe or even just tanking the face. I don't think you can use the SI seven in a reasonable way. You can dagger up deadly poison and then SI seven, but that doesn't yeah. do anything. The prep with the SI seven doesn't really do much. I think prep oil and eviscerate. Is probably going to be the way to do this. Uh, he, oh, blade flurry. Okay, yeah, that's even better. Yeah, yeah, that's actually very good as well. It keeps the five three stealthed. And that's oh, okay. It doesn't see, it doesn't stealth it. Just it goes to attack with it. I like that as well. Being a little bit more aggressive. Mm -hmm. Ancient of lore. Uh, but the Gilbin's going to trade perfectly with an ancient of lore. So, pretty good read, I think, from Tice. He doesn't even it. have to use it. Uh, yeah, he can dagger up deadly poison eviscerate it and use the si7 agent and still keep it alive or just azure drake eviscerate is even yeah, a better just, turn so yeah, many ways. What I was gonna say. and uh this is this goes back to sort of that violet teacher play where the druid used so many resources to take out the violet teacher instead of drawing cards or developing his own board um because he he, he wasn't putting on pressure one of the ways you beat rogue i said earlier was applying lots of pressure early on and then just being able to close out the game with a force of nature savage or always threatening the force of nature savage or but um that blade flurry really just set uh show so far behind yeah and keeping that five three alive is pretty useful as well particularly since there's a second ancient of lore potentially coming down uh true to the claw potential sap target but may able to use to save that sap to push through for damage later on um look trying to look at how much damage Sure has in hand actually. He doesn't have enough mana to really sap and do a lot of damage. Is the Wrath is going to be able to kill the five three as well? So uh, backstab deadly poison clears off the Druid of the Claw here. Doesn't even need to use the sap. 
Um, because if he saps here, uh, he's not really developing much else from himself because he has to dagger up as well, so that leaves him with four mana. Uh, he does have potential to dagger up, sap, and then oil, uh, in which case he can actually put 11 damage on the face this turn. Um, but I'm not sure if he wants to use the sap yet. Um, but it looks like that's the play that he's going to go for. So this is going to, he's going to be able to put out a lot of damage right now. Uh, he might want the extra body on the board just to make his board uh, stickier for the following turn. Um, but he wouldn't use up his mana as well. But it looks like uh, Dagger Up, Deadly Poison, SI Agent is going to be the play. This isn't going to put the most damage on that he, that he could have done this turn. Because of course using that oil would have been it. But again, like I said, putting more bodies on the board, spreading out that damage. Making so you have two targets next turn for your for that oil to be able to go on, plus the backstab to be able to proc it is uh, probably the better choice. Absolutely, and this is a pretty tough position for show. Does have a swipe to deal with his Azure Drake, which could be crucial. But doesn't really have a lot else. I mean, he can swipe Andrew to the claw, which is probably his best play, since he knows there's uh, there's not another sap coming down right this second. Earthling Farseer is not bad. Gets another body on the board. Gives show Tyson an even bigger advantage in the life game. I guess he's just going to have to use the the dagger and the SI7 to clear this here. How does he want to best set this up? I think just trading in the SI agent, attacking him with the dagger, then just re dagger. Earthring Farseer is probably his best play. Yeah, I think he probably he definitely wants to save the oil, I think. Doesn't want to play that this turn. Well, there's Usually no... He has the mana. <clears throat> there's not much of a benefit of playing it this turn. Um, uh, he can get him one, one off lethal, so that's probably what he's going to do. This is really risky, though, because he's using all of his damage. Yeah, I'm not sure if I like this. I think this is a pretty risky play. Oh, no, no, no. Okay, no, never mind. He's only... Okay, yeah, he's going to be able to heal up as well. So, no, this is... That's the best way to do it because there, there's still actually a lot of things left. If there... A taunt coming out next turn isn't that big of a deal because he's got two bodies on the board. Um, being able to re-dagger up was the key there because being able to re-dagger up and then putting on the oil means that not only is he threatening on board, but he's also threatening from his weapon. Um... So he has to find a way to taunt up here and avoid direct damage, and there's just no way. Yeah. All right, well, that's probably going to be the game for Tice, putting his opponent to one health. It's pretty tough to see our show can uh, survive from this position and come back and win the game. No co no full combo pieces, nothing like that. To save him here, you can see show a little bit agonized over this decision. I guess Azure Drake Druid of the Claw is the best you can do, but your Druid of the Claw just dies and then... There's plenty of damage on board. Thinking about Ancient of Lore, but again, if he heals up to six, that's not going to save him. So, what can he? What can he possibly draw off the Ancient of Lore to stay alive? I don't think there's anything. I guess maybe no, even Innervate. No, because uh, he'd already used one Innervate. Like the only thing that would no, there was nothing that could have saved him. Yeah, so he goes ahead and concedes, and, and Tice takes that game. Uh, the secret thing at the end there, uh, he really played that last turn. Um, initially, I thought it, I didn't see a way for him to use up all his mana and be able to have a fresh dagger. Um, yeah. But he getting that fresh dagger was the key there, uh, because he didn't have any points of wasted damage. Um, any other any other way that you make that play, you have a point of wasted damage. Uh, like if you just use the deadly poison and through the through the SI7 agent there, then you're only going to have one creature on the board the next turn, which allows him to clear and put a taunt up the same turn, which makes you really vulnerable. So by doing this, he, he set it up so that you had to clear the board and be able to deal with this weapon, which was just impossible. So uh, really well played by Tice. And now shows sort of on the ropes here. Uh, Tice only has to find a win with one more, with one more deck, and it is going to be his uh, mage. Hey. And uh, of course, show will give it one more try with that druid. To see if you can pick up that one. Yeah, I think that's uh, a reasonable play. Sticking with the Druid. Doesn't know what mage this is yet. And uh, I just said 
pretty good shout this is Freeze Mage, and if this is Freeze Mage, Tice is going to just feel really good in this matchup about having avoided the warrior. Can't stress enough how important it is for Tice if he's playing Freeze Mage to dodge that warrior. Yeah. And he doesn't have to worry about the warrior anymore, so he's in pretty Absolutely. good shape. Pretty good shape. How does the uh, the Druid match up if this is same if this is a Freeze Mage? Druid is one of the best classes against Freeze Mage. Uh, I talked about it a little bit earlier. They have a lot of defensive tools. Um, they have a lot of. They can put a lot of damage from hand. They can threaten pop. It, they can threaten lethal early on. They can pop the block early on. Um, they're they're one of the two classes that their hero power gives armor. So if they're able to build up armor early on, if they're able to build up enough board to to pressure and have and be able to threaten early block with savage or force nature savage or, um, then they're in good shape. They also have cards like Ancient of Lore to be able to heal them after Alex Straza. Uh, Lothab is a staple card and almost an auto include in most Druid decks, which is also another defensive card that you can use uh, for Alex Straza or Archmage Antonidas. So Druid is one of the classes that has the most tools against Freeze Mage. What we do see it is uh, pretty much guarantee it is Freeze Mage, Double Blizzard, uh, Doomsayers. Yeah, so this is Freeze Mage against Druid here. And yeah, as you said, pretty good matchup for Druid, and I think... But Tice not feeling too bad about it. He can, certainly can win this match. Um, and even if he doesn't win this match, he can. He has a really good chance against the Warlock as well. So two chances to get a win with this for Tice. Uh, early Wild Growth is pretty good for show. And, this, uh, this is a pretty good hand. Uh, Emperor Thorson is really good because it allows you to make a lot of power play turns. Uh, say he draws into an Ancient of War next turn. Uh, it could allow him to be able to uh, play... Thorsan and reduce the cost of his Lothab to 4 and his Ancient of Lore to 6. So he can Lothab and Ancient of Lore in the same turn. Which is pretty ridiculous, <laughs> if you think about it. MC Tech, and we're seeing this in a, a lot of shows' decks, and we're seeing, it in, we're seeing a couple of other players as well uh, bring that MC Tech. Is that, do you think that's a, a zoo insurance? That Assuming a lot of players are going to play that zoo deck? Oh yeah, for sure. Uh, MC Tech is actually a pretty good tech card right now. Just because of the popularity of Zoo. I mean, you're almost guaranteed to run into Zoo um, in a tournament setting because so many people are playing it. And it's such a great card. But it's a dead tech card in a lot of other matchups. Druid is one of the classes that can kind of afford to have a wasted tech card. Um, you still have a lot of Druids, especially in like Seatsuri Cup or Vigame House Cup, running Kazan Mystic. Just because they have a little bit of room to do that. Because even just playing just a naked 3-3 three, three on the board like that. It's not the worst thing in the world. It's There's worse turn 3 plays that you can make. And since they're mostly worried about ramping up and getting to those impactful drops early, um, my control tech can usually just serves as that interim, the the card that the buy you time against matchups where you're not going to get used out of the battle cry. We see a little bit of uh, proactive Thorison protection there from Tice playing the Doomsayer to stop that Thorison coming down. <laughs> I don't even know if that's actually what it is, but usually turn six is a really impactful turn for Druids as it is. Usually either like Sylvanas or um, or Emperor Thor's Hand, something like that. But yeah, Thor's Hand protection is real. It's just a buy time in general. And his, I mean, Tice's hand is actually really good. He's got, he had card draw early on. He had freeze plus Doomsayer early on. Uh, he's got the Alex Straza in his hand already, plus the Ice Block in his hand already. He's got almost everything you need. The only thing he needs to do right now is just to draw into Burn. Draw into his, his other Frost Bolts, Ice Lands, Fireballs, Pyro Blast. Pretty much any form of Burn, as long as he draws into it, he's in fantastic shape. Yeah, this is definitely a good Freeze Mage hand. This is a perfect example of what Freeze Mage needs to draw, at least about half of it. And uh, yeah, we're going to see the Thorson come down now, a turn later than it could have done. It's uh, going to reduce the price of that Force of Nature, which could be pretty crucial later on. We'll see. Yeah, he needs to threaten block poppage. <laughs> pretty soon. Block poppage. Yeah. That sounds kind of filthy. Not to be confused with pop blockage. The 1950 anti-soda revolution that happened in the the Pacific Northwest of the United States. That, that's not actually a real event, but you're from Scotland, so I'm trying to troll you by making up things that never happened in America. 
I mean, America is a crazy backwards country, so this is no. It wouldn't surprise Whoa! me. Whoa! That's the sort of thing that did happen. Whoa! Oh! See, two can play that game. Shots two can fired. play the troll game. Shots but, uh, fired. Fireball going in on Thoris in here for Tice. That's uh, that is obviously a very important burn card, but he didn't have any other way to deal with that Thoris, and I think he is, as you say, very aware of pl of. Pl I was going to say plot fuckage there, which is that's another completely different thing. Very the, aware. Of the pop blockage. The block the poppage. Block poppage. That's yeah. gonna be really hard for me. That's that's like a that's a that's a right cock hammer of a phrase there. <laughs> Definitely. Indeed. Indubitably. <laughs> Things are gonna live off the rails here. We're only three games in. So uh doesn't bode well for the rest of the day here, TJ. We're going a little bit stir crazy. Nope. That's what you get when you sign up to cast with me. Indeed. Well, pretty much a full hand for Tice here. He's looking at what he's got in hand. He does have the, the Thanos there and the Acolyte of Pain for some more card draw. Double barrier in hand is a little bit unfortunate as well. Acolyte of Pain is too much of a liability to play right now. Um, just wants to get a little bit more insurance here. Blizzard, <clears throat> pretty good. Yeah, this is, I mean, this is like a great sequence of draws. Uh, for Tice. This is what you want. Draw early, freeze mid, and burn late. Like that's that's like the the oath that you that you swear in when you when you play Freeze Mage for the first time and the, the Freeze Mage Council freeze mage. comes in comes into your into your house and swears you in the Freeze Mage oath. The freeze um, mage eternity. Yeah exactly. And having to use the force of nature to just protect the board that he has right now is just really rough because that's just um, it, it, he has the second one in his hand, so it, he can be a little bit more liberal with it. Uh, but that's just that much damage extra that he's uh, essentially not going to be able to use to uh, to get that that block popped. And we're at eight mana now. Um, he has a safe turn to Blizzard. Um, he has block already active with twenty four health. So if he Blizzards this turn, um, or just freezes this turn, or buys time this turn, even just Ice Barrier this turn. Um, and maybe Acolyte to, to draw something in. He can Alex draws the next turn, have a couple turns to be able to draw into more burn um, to be able to close out the game. So let's see. I'm trying to think what's the best play here. If he Ice Barriers, Acolytes of Pain, Acolyte of Pains, and then pings it, um, he'll be at nine cards. So he won't overdraw from that scenario. That's one thing you had to worry about. Uh, there is a way that the that show can make him overdraw by uh, hero powering into it and then attacking into it again. So he can... Submit, take some inspiration from Tides earlier. Yeah. Blood Mage Thanos Blizzard, I think, is a little bit more consistent of a play in that regard. I think he has a lot of the tools that he needs and he doesn't want to risk overdrawing. Because at this stage, that's one of the only ways that he can lose the game. If he loses a cru crucial card from overdrawing from Acolyte of Pain, yeah, absolutely. And being able to kill that shade's pretty big as well, at the three at the three health range. So uh, yeah, <laughs> he's desperately trying to cycle here. He's looking for ancient of war. He's looking for something to place on the board. Savage roar. He's clawing in the dark. A snake in the grass. <laughs> Shredder's not bad here. It's it's a body on the board, but yeah, as you say, this was desperation for something. Oh, flame strike off the top. Now he's a snake in the grass at night. <laughs> Even more deadly. Well, you can ping the Boucher here and then flame strike. Or you can go with Antonidas and some crazy Antonidas shenanigans with Ice Lance as well. I'm just going to see a freeze on both, I think, just to get as many fireballs in the hand as possible. Wild show in its natural environment, pursued by the natural predator Tice, using the snooze as bait. <laughs> oh my God! Okay. Show, show cannot withstand. Well, gets a keeper of the grove off the top, so he can silence this Antonidas if he wants to. He's looking at that second force of nature, but using that would really not be a good position. Let's think about Lothab as well. I think Lothab is the only play that you can make here. Um, 
you sort of need that that next force nature to ah man it's so tough you want to hold force of nature uh hero power clear here is is pretty decent um also saving a for alex Shaw's turn to buy yourself some extra time is also decent but there's I, again we talked about it a little bit before there's plays to win and then there's plays to not lose and uh he needs to save that second force of nature to uh threaten popping the block um, so this is the better play. Instead of clearing the Archmage Antonitis off, he puts as much power on the board as possible, plays the Lotheb so uh, he protects that board. He's really setting up to pop the block next turn, which is what he needs to do. And uh, I don't, he doesn't even have enough, he won't even have enough damage to do it, I don't think, unless he draws into Savage Roar. But this, no. is, the, this is the best course of action in that situation. Yeah, he's only got 18. But... <laughs> oh, man. Here comes Alex Straza, and you know what comes after Alex Straza? Death. Pretty much. Pretty so does he have enough burn in his hand? Um, he actually doesn't. Um, because there's 18 health with that armor, so double fireball frostbolt, which is 15 damage, which would usually be the the best follow-up after uh, Alex Straza, is not going to be enough. So, so actually uh, Druid of the Claw is, uh, is pretty good here. It does keep him alive. Yeah, uh, well, not really. He needs... He has to pop the block this turn. There's no choice, and I don't think he can. If he can't pop the block this turn, he basically loses. 15, 16. He can pop the block if he plays Force of Nature, but there's no other way. He only gets two. Oh, God, yeah, you're right. Um, he'll have to So there's sack, no way to pop it. He'll have to sack the Sludge and then pop it, but if he does that, he's leaving 13 damage worth of, of bodies on the board. He can't do it. With no taunt. With no taunt. I don't think there's <laughs> I don't think there's any way out of this for show. Um, no, I th he can pop the block if he goes, uh, if he sacks the slime, and then force of natures and hero powers. But then he doesn't have the mana to play Druid of the Claw. And this, yeah, he's just gonna go with the taunt here. No, yeah, show can spread out or sorry, Tice can spread out this damage over a couple turns. He just needs to draw into a little bit more burn. He needs like fire blast or ice lance. Um, oh, there's another fireball. Yeah, so he's in really great shape. He can just fireball, fireball, frostbolt uh, this turn, set up for a fireball yep. next turn. Um, frostbolt would mean, oh, uh, yeah. Actually, yep. no, fro frostbolting the, the slime. Huh. Oh, no, it's lethal. Oh, no, no, just kidding. There's a second taunt all the way to the right. <laughs> Playing that Drew the Claw and taunt for him is actually <laughs> what saved him here. I mean, it's the only thing that means he doesn't die this turn, but yeah, yeah. it doesn't save him overall. Um, he's actually going to fireball it. Yeah, this. I think this is the way you can put out the most damage. <clears throat> uh, because you're putting 8 damage onto his face instead of that fireball, which would have been uh, 6 damage. So instead of throwing 8 damage into the 6 health Druid of the Claw and wasting that damage, uh, this is the way he can maximize damage this turn. He's got double fireball next turn. He he might just he looks like he's just gonna play the ice barrier. Defend a little bit and make sure there's no way that this block gets popped this turn. Even though the second block is in hand, there's no way it's gonna get popped, even with uh yeah, no savage or top deck, so he's just protecting himself as much as possible. Double fireball, even if it was an ancient of lore or something, probably would be able to outlast it. Okay, the biggest thing here uh, for show, of course, we, we see the hand, so we know that there's lethal next turn, but the biggest thing for show is he needs to clear the Alex off the board and pop the block. Can he do that? He'll have to put 8 damage into here, which would leave him with um, 9, 12, 16. It's one off, right? One, oh, one damage off being able to pop the block <laughs> and clear the Alex That's rough. Yeah, that's pretty bad. Yeah. So yeah, he's gonna, I guess, pop the block. <clears throat> yeah, he can pop the block and then put the out, put it up in taunt form. I don't think he's gonna. I don't think he can pop it. I think killing the Alistar here is more important. He can't. Yeah, because he can't actually. Uh. He can't do both. Can't do both, no. Because he can't, he doesn't have room to play the Druid of the Claw. Yeah. Okay, yeah, no, he does have, he does have room, because he can sack one into the Alex. No, he can't do both. 
It's impossible to do both. I mean, you can't kill, but you can play the taunt and pop the block. Yeah. Yeah. Which you, you needed to sack one into the Alex to do. But yeah, double fireball is going to steal this series for Tice. Tice is going to advance three to one over show and uh no upsets so far in this series tj in this tournament tj i don't know if he, a lot of these matchups i don't know if there's really a favorite coming into it a lot of the players were uh quite evenly matched um show this actually would be sort of considered an upset because uh show is actually uh considered i guess a higher ranked player than tice show is actually ahead of tice in uh the gosu gamers rankings um muzzy was actually is actually the player that has the most in this tournament. <laughs> wow. So, Muzzy and then Show. So, actually, the last matchup could have been considered an upset, too. Well, yeah. can't be but too much stock in, in that regard. Game. Yeah, yeah, exactly, exactly, exactly. So, uh, it, you you really can't put... A lot of these matches, there really is no favorite coming into it. Um, well, this is setting up some pretty mouth-watering quarterfinals already. We're going to have Jab versus Dog, Hyped versus Chucky, Tides versus Garo and a former Temple Storm teammates colliding. And we're going to see Tice against the winner of our final round of 16 match. Go sound the force and boy alarm. Tell it from the mountaintops. Dad is here. Forsen versus Oleic is going to be our next match. And we'll take a quick break before we get into that. Um, but yeah, Tice advancing. One of the stronger players in this tournament. One of the more experienced players in the tournament as well. Um, it really f honestly feels like the bottom of this bracket is super loaded in the players we're getting in the quarterfinals. I mean, the whole tight... bracket is loaded. Jeez. Oh, yeah. But in, ter in terms of like decorated players from last year, Tides, Gara, and Tice, three of the most successful players in terms of how many titles they have to their name from last year. So yeah. it's going to be really interesting to see how this bracket shapes out. We have so many good players coming up in our quarterfinals, but I'd say we have one more round of 16 match. And uh, before we go to our break, obviously going to keep you updated on everything we're here for. Remember, this is, of course, the Kingdom of Charity Tournament. We're here to raise money for Child's Play, the uh, foundation that buys games and consoles for kids with uh, with cancer and long-term illness to help make their stay in hospital or even their last days a little bit more enjoyable. So you can donate below. All the money goes to uh child's play nothing comes to king so 100 percent of the donations do go you can see the counter on the screen of how much king has raised to date for child's play it's over seven and a half thousand dollars so it's pretty big and uh you can also tj i think there's a raffle that you can tell people about oh yes one of my favorite things about hearthstone tournaments in general is the ability to give away packs to deserving tj loves packs to deserving i haven't realized this yet Deserving Twitch chat citizens, deserving viewers, you guys need packs. So why don't you go ahead and type exclamation mark packs. Don't be afraid to type it more than once. Don't be afraid to type it more than twice. If you want packs, type exclamation mark packs. Go to the link. Do whatever the link tells you, and there's a chance that you will win packs. And uh, I will buy your packs for $0.25 cents each pack. So if you get those pack giveaways and you want to sell them to me, I'll be more than willing. But what, make sure $5? you type it. Five dollars. That's how much you would. Uh... Yeah. Just don't question it. I know you can get packs for cheaper, but these packs are basically free packs. So you're basically making five dollars for nothing. So what do you value more, packs or dollars? I know I value packs more, but there might be someone out there who values dollars more. In which case, sell your packs to me. You value uh, packs more than just about anything, TJ. Isn't that right? More than money, more than uh, fame, fortune, family. <clears throat> yeah. I value packs more than my personal health. I actually donate plasma uh, more times than it's healthy. And when I go to the plasma donation facility, instead of getting money, instead of getting cash, I force them to log into my tablet or my phone and buy me packs from the Google Play Store. Wow, I have uh... I have scars up and down my arms. People think that I'm like a, a drug addict just because. Well, let's let's uh, donations. Let's not talk about you sell, about you you know selling drugs to pay for packs. Let's not let's not talk about that. Uh, you I digress. Pay for packs. I digress. Uh, if we get late enough in the day, maybe after the watershed, we can talk about TJ selling his body for packs. But let's leave that for now and go to a quick break. We're gonna be back. In about 10 minutes with Forsen versus Oleic. The Forsen boys are coming. Prepare yourselves, Twitch chat. The Forsen boys are coming. Dad is here. And uh, we're going to talk a little bit about that matchup before it happens. But you're watching the King of a Cherry Easter Edition 2015. Make sure you stay with us for Forsen versus Oleic. <laughs> 